A warm welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 23rd of November. Now we want to look today at what can only be called the Japanese miracle really. Let me just show you some graphics of Japan. It really is quite astounding compared to what we're still going through in the UK, the United States, Europe, other places. Here's the situation in Japan. So here we are now, very, very low cases, having come down from this massive increase here and we fussed about this a lot and warned about how dangerous the the Olympics were at this time. Now just looking at this last massive wave sort of tsunami of cases in Japan that's that wave in a little more detail so that's kind of spread out the timeline a bit there so that's from the 3rd of August to the 12th of September when the cases were high in Japan. Now the next thing I'm going to show you uh, must be a, a very strange coincidence, but let's look at it. Now this is the date here when ivermectin was allowed as a treatment in, J in Japan, the 13th of August. Now if you Google this, if you Google ivermectin Japan, it, you'll get at the first 30 or 40 or 50 and entrances will be saying that Japan has not approved ivermectin as an official treatment for COVID-19. And that's true, it hasn't. But... I'm going to show you why I've got this date on here now. Um, that, that one there is the 13th of August, ivermectin allowed as a treatment in Japan. So that was the 13th there, that day there. So 13, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 days. And then the cases started to completely plummet off down to where we are now uh, in Japan. So one of those uh, one of those interesting coincidences. Strangely enough, it's a coincidence that hasn't really been referred to on um, mainstream Western media. Um, now let's go on to look at this a bit more detail. So uh, ivermectin allows a treatment on the thirteenth of August, and we saw that coincidentally just after that the case is plummeted two weeks after that. Now, my understanding is this. Now, I'm getting more information from Japan um, really as we speak. I'm expecting a, a report from Japan uh, tomorrow, actually, which, of course, I'll send on to you straight away. Um, but doctors can prescribe it without restriction. You know, I've met in Japan without uh, they can prescribe without restriction. Uh, people can buy it legally from India, apparently. Uh, as I say, I'm going to be confirming all this directly from Japanese citizens in the next day or two but this is this is I'm pretty sure this is true now and I'm going to give evidence for this now as well from this website here now this is the uh, gentleman concerned and this is the Japanese website now um I'm not going to pretend I'm a Japanese scholar <laughs> I'm most certainly not um so I have used uh, as you might expect uh, Google Translate so we are Google Translate dependent here uh, uh, until we get more confirmation, but it's looking it's looking like this is a fairly good translation. So this is Dr. Hario Uzaki, uh, not a junior doctor on some remote island in Japan, chairman of the Tokyo Medical Association, and this is the gentleman here, chairman of the Tokyo Medical uh, Association. Now, um, when the cases were going up dramatically. As we saw, let's just have a quick, uh, I've gone to the wrong one, let's just have a quick refresher of that there. So when the cases were going up dramatically in Japan, I can't find it. Is it down there? No, it's down there. When the cases were going up dramatically in Japan, so we're talking about sort of um, this time here. This is when he made that statement and the 13th when Ivermectin was allowed was just uh, was just there. So he was speaking in the middle of um, what can only be described as a as a crisis. Um, and he said this, uh, the situation is that the whole country is suffering from disasters. No one will listen to me. I can't imagine how he feels. No one will listen to me. So I will come up with a new policy. The anti-parasitic drug ivermectin shows a number of in, shows the number of infections and deaths of the new corona in a country that is prophylactically administered for another disease in Africa. Now, of course, Google translates, so it's not perfect English, but he's noted the correlation between low numbers of cases in African countries that are using ivermectin. Now, he does say it's necessary to thoroughly study the clinical trial, which, of course, we don't have conclusive data on. But he then goes on to say, um, 
but it seems that we are at the stage where it is okay to have the patient give an informed outlet and get permission to use it. Now, I think the word that Google Translate has translated as outlet there uh, would, would be more accurately translated as a consent. So the patient can give an informed consent and get permission to use it. Now, remember, we were speaking uh, at this time here. And he changed the rules there two weeks before the cases started to plummet down again in Japan, which was, of course, great to see. So, uh, interesting. Now, let's um, carry on with Japan. So, population 126 million. Um, sorry, I'm just distracted with something there because I want to show you some more graphics in a minute. Yeah, here's, here's the graphics I want to show you now, in fact. Um, so this this graphic here, yeah, we're right now. This graphic here is uh, the current cases. So United Kingdom, United States, Canada, Japan. So uh, pretty convincing evidence that Japan is doing a lot better than most of us. And if we go on and look at the uh, new confirmed COVID-19 deaths per million, Again, the States, United Kingdom, you've got to say it's levelish. Japan dropping, uh, Canada, sorry, dropping off a bit. But Japan, it is remarkably low. It's not zero. It's not zero. But it is remarkably low. Which would you prefer? Obviously, the Japanese figure. Now, I did look for um, hospitalizations in Japan, but they didn't have it. Now, to balance this, we have to notice that uh, vaccinations are high in Japan, Canada and the United Kingdom. Uh, so Japan, yeah, a little bit higher than Canada, um, a bit higher than the United Kingdom, the United States, but not not massively so in people uh, fully vaccinated. Significant, but not massively so. And we'll be looking at evidence that suggests that vaccine is not the only explanation for this in Japan. But no question that after an incredibly slow start, Japan has done remarkably well on vaccinations now we, we looked at something the other day um i can't remember where it was now someone said it's not vaccinations it was actually the world health organization they said actually vax it's not vaccinations or it's vaccinations uh, and so pretty pretty interesting data there population of Japan 126 million cases at the moment seem to be 79 in the day two deaths in the day in japan lowest since the 23rd of june 2020 japan's currently reopening Yes, it's got a high uh, vaccination status, as we've just seen. But so is South Korea. And South Korea's got an uptick in infections, where in Japan the infections are going down. Boosters in Japan are planned to start in December. Now, Japan is a very disciplined um, nation. And mask wearing was already very much part of their culture. So ingrained pre-pandemic mask wearing to prevent flu and other respiratory infections. So people at the moment all over Japan are still wearing masks. They are still social distancing. They are still exercising discipline that, uh, at least in, in, in England, we are not. So there are other factors there. But basically, I think we'd have to say that in Japan... Uh, the Delta variant wave has ended, as we've just seen. It really is uh, quite incredible. Now, some people have described this as a, a self-extinction. So um, I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Um, but the, the gra graphics, just, they, just, they just really grab you, these, these, these graphics here. Um, that's not that one. I want one on Japan. I want that one. There we go. I mean, I mean, the 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 the, the curves there are just are just absolutely uh, absolutely stunning. The the reductions in cases in Japan to essentially nothing. And of course, this coincidence that's when ivermectin was uh, introduced. But of course, we want to look at all the uh, all the evidence and all the possibilities on this channel. So that's what we're going to carry on doing. Now, another possibility for the great reduction in Japan is that um, there's been a genetic change in the virus in Japan. So um, viral genetic mutations could, of course, self-extinction is another possibility. Now, this is very interesting. This is uh, Intro Inuri, a, a professor, National Institute of Genetics. He says this, Delta variant in Japan accumulated too many mutations. 
uh, virus error correcting protein NSP14. So NSP14. Now, what NSP14 does is, um, so what will happen is the, um, the, the, the virus will reproduce. And as I understand the way this works, NSP14 is checking that the way that the virus has reproduced, the, the components in, in the RNA have been accurately copied. And if there's an inaccuracy in the copy, NSP14 will, will, uh, will correct that. So this is not a structural protein. But that seem, in Japan, there seems to be an error in the virus's error-correcting protein, NSP14. Now, if NSP14 is, is uh, not corrected, uh, that means that lots of mutations will arise in the virus. And that means that the amino acids will be in the wrong order. The proteins will be in the wrong order. So the virus will basically fall apart. The virus will not be produced properly. And this seems to be largely down to one mutation. The majority of the NSP14 specimens in Japan had a mutation called A394V. So where the A amino acid there had changed to the V amino acid at the position 394. Now, this is not the spike protein. It's, it's none of the particular structural proteins that we have been considering. It's the protein which is making sure the virus accurately replicates itself. Without this protein, the virus will not accurately replicate. Therefore, it will replicate inaccurately into non-viable forms. So that may well, that may well have happened according to the, this uh, academic group here. So it's a non-structural protein. Now, it's important to stress this NSP14 is, is, is a protein made by the virus. So this is a change in the virus itself which means that the virus is no longer reproducing accurately. Therefore, most of the copies of the virus that are produced are full of errors and non-viable. So could it be that this particular mutation that the Japanese have been lucky enough to have means that their viruses are no longer reproducing viably? Well, again, it's not inconsistent with that, is it? I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just incredible. Incredible. So another possibility, therefore errors accumulating, leading to non-viability, a lucky uh, mutation or a series of mutations. Now also, another interesting possibility is not related to the genetics of the virus, but related to the genetics of the Japanese themselves. Now the Japanese have been, uh, there hasn't been a lot of genetic interbreeding in Japan for a long, long time, probably a few thousand years. Um, so people in Japan might have particular genetic variations that people in other parts of the world don't have. And indeed, this seems to be the case. So more people in Asia, particularly in Japan, have a defense enzyme called AP, I don't know if it's, uh, no, APOBEC33A. So this is, a, this is a, a defense enzyme. So this is an enzyme that people have that helps them to defend against viruses. So whereas the this one, was made by the virus this one is made by the people now this if you're lucky enough to have this defense enzyme here that will attack rna viruses and of course covid19 is an rna virus so it looks like the japanese could be onto a double whammy here but in a, in a positive direction it looks like they might have had a fortunate uh, mutation in the virus or they've got a uh, fortunate mutation in themselves, which makes them more resistant to these sort of viruses. And uh, so this induces the, the, the this induces the SARS coronavirus too that causes COVID nineteen uh, to be killed more in the Japanese when compared to people in Europe and Africa. So that could be a change in the Japanese people themselves. So possibility there that it's a change in the virus and that definitely does seem to have occurred this mutation does seem to have occurred the debate is over how much difference it's made um, this mutation is more common in the Japanese people than in the English people or most of the American people for example um, although of course there is Japanese ethnicity in the state so it'd be interesting to know in fact from memory I think Japanese people in the states have had less uh, COVID-19 um, deaths. This is something that the American authorities really need to be going on to now. Look at the Japanese ethnic population in America. Look at the, uh, the say, the other indigenous groups, black Americans, white Americans, whatever it is, and compare this genetics and get a handle on this. It's amazing that no big study has been done on America in this because it's such an obvious place to look. Get on to it, someone in the States. 
Um, now, another possibility, this is the Institute of Genetics and, uh, and uh, N- Nigata University. This is the same professor actually saying this. Um, it's, it's, this, this is still led by this, this professor here. Um, uh, th- they're researching to discover how the uh, human antiviral protein might interact with the lack of the viral protein, uh, the, the viral RNA correcting protein. But interestingly, the, the mutation that could cause the viral mutation is discovered in 24 other countries. Don't know more about that now. More to, to come on that. And interestingly, of course, SARS coronavirus 1 ended abruptly in 2003, and this virus no longer exists. So if we take the entire globe of the Earth here, you will not find any SARS coronavirus 1. I don't even think there's any in the labs. I think they missed the opportunity to save it. It's simply not there. So, um, interesting. Could this be um, the viral mutation that caused it to end suddenly? Could it be the um, the fact that the, the, the virus was still <clears throat> most prevalent in areas where people had a higher defence from it, although the virus had spread to Canada, of course, uh, by, by this time? Anyway, it ended abruptly, so so that's good. Could, could this be the contribute to the causes? Interesting, <clears throat> and they're actually working on a drug that inhibits this in the virus, which of course would be a seriously good idea, because that would mess up the genetics of the virus, and because um, it's just affecting the genetics of the virus, we wouldn't expect it to affect the genetics of people. So there's some possibilities, and of course we looked at this interesting coincidence that ivermectin was introduced then in Japan. So uh, <laughs> pretty interesting stuff really. Now I was going to talk about Gibraltar because I've got so many people asking about Gibraltar but um, I'm quite uh, quite uh, uh, my mind's still mulling over all this stuff that we've just looked at. Some quite amazing stuff really. So I'm going to leave it there for today and thank you of course for watching.